Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity may contain explicit and questionable content. The views and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the individual podcaster Rebecca Adams and are not based on the advice of a licensed therapist, psychologist, or psychiatrist. Listener discretion is strongly advised. Human lives follow many paths, presenting twists and turns and choices never planned, never expected. Temptation, anger, depression, and loneliness all can lead a person to a mistake they can't take back. Facing judgment and isolation, a person can feel very alone. These are the voices of women who have chosen to cheat on their spouses or partners. Hear their stories. This is Raw Truth, Stories of Female Infidelity. Previously on Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity, CJ, Part 1. I am now holding secrets every day. Secrets from my husband, family, friends. Secrets that would be beyond destructive to all of these people. My relationship with Timothy remained the same, only I was on my best behavior, trying not to fight or argue or question his jerkedness just to keep him from being any sort of suspicious. I was like glue with my phone, checking my messages every chance I got, without seeming obvious. Timothy could have grabbed my phone at any point in time. He never did, but had he? It would have exposed this best friendship and beyond. Welcome back, everybody. This is Rebecca. Hopefully everybody is doing well. We are going to go ahead and just jump right on into part two of CJ's story. It got deeper. We finally talked about meeting on a different level. We knew what it meant. And we were both so nervous, but through the roof excited at the same time. Continuing to be just Steve, his outgoing, always making me laugh, super smart, own three businesses, the crazily involved dad that I knew him as. In fact, I have no idea how he had time for me at all, and I was falling, falling further and further. He knew of a place to meet, a nature preserve just outside of town. Our spouses were both at work and the kids were all in school. He was his own boss, so he could do whatever he pleased. He waited for me at his business driveway just before the freeway entrance, and I followed him. We pulled into the parking lot. I could feel myself shaking more than I was on the drive. I was beyond scared, with a million butterflies doing figure eights in my tummy. He got out of his truck and made his way over to my car where I rolled down the window. We just looked at each other and smiled. What in the world? I had known this man for years. He was my dad's friend. It had always been running jokes that Steve was CJ's husband, number two, and CJ was Steve's wife, number two. And suddenly that was no more a joke. It was different now. I stared at him and finally said, What are we doing? Almost with a tear welling up. He said, I think we both know. I said, I get that, but really, what is happening and why? I've never felt so foreign in my whole life. We're friends. We're married. He said, we see things in each other that we want, and I imagine aren't getting from the other people we should be getting them from. It just happened. You're beautiful. You laugh with me. You talk to me. You're amazing with the kids. You look at me and your eyes say a million different things at the same time. I was shocked to hear him say these things and have never been so blunt and honest with someone like this about feelings that were new and spot on. We didn't have much time. We had kiddos to pick up soon and maybe left us with a 20 minute window. We had to go already. We both smiled at each other and I said, Okay, dad friend, 
We'll see you at practice tonight. He started walking toward his truck, turned back around, and came right back to my window. He leaned in, and he kissed me. I was shaking more than I thought possible. In my mind, all I could think was, Oh my gosh, you just kissed a married man and you're a married woman. I cannot believe this is happening. We both headed home. He waited for me so that I could follow him and not get lost. He always took care of me. Even things maybe a husband should take care of, but Steve did. He helped me decorate and lift all the heavy things for my daughter's birthday party one Saturday because Timothy was on a shift. He immediately messaged me saying, I kissed you. Are you okay? Am I okay? No, I'm not. Not at all. But every ounce of me wanted to do it again. I kissed my son's best friend's dad. How could I have gotten myself into this position? And it's too late to catch myself and act like it never happened. Suddenly, I realized, I think it's too late. All I want is more of him, any way I could get it. The messaging grew intensely and only got deeper and deeper as the days went on. It became when we can see each other again. A few days later, we met at his business. He stored this monstrosity of a fifth wheel trailer there. One night, I made an excuse to run to the grocery store. He messaged me the gate code and we met in the pitch dark at the trailer. Once we were inside, he instantly grabbed me and held me so tightly, kissed me for, it felt like, minutes. It was perfect. It just fell together, all of it. The way he was so strong in his grip around me kissed me like I was his one that got away. Some talking, kissing, and just being wrapped up in each other for a while, and we needed to go. It hit me. What in the world am I going to say about not having groceries when I arrive home? I yelled, Oh gosh, I, I need to run to the grocery store and buy whatever I can as fast as I can and get home. He felt awful and apologized immensely for having caused that fear. I made it home and was in the clear, thank goodness. He always messaged me the minute I'd leave and wanted to make sure I was safe and all was good. The second time we met, we planned for more time. Just like our normal friendship routine, we always had an overabundance of things to talk about. More time was still never enough. I feared what this next get-together would consist of, knowing how passionate the first time was with just kissing. We were playing with fire. Everything just fit so perfectly. Kissing him was dorky, I agree, but it was like magic. We truly couldn't get enough. He was strong and touched me and held me completely different than I was used to. I adored it. I adored him. I would look up at him to always catch him staring right into my eyes. Weirdly as outgoing as I am, it made me incredibly shy. I would take my hands and cover my eyes so he couldn't anymore. We had so many fun little things that only he and I would ever understand. Understatement of the century, it ultimately happened. We fell into everything. We had completely lost all control that we individually both ever thought we had. The sex was something I'd never experienced before. Like I said earlier, everything just fit so perfectly. Now when I look back, I wonder if it was that amazing and always possible because of the friendship we had formed for so long. Not that he's unattractive, because trust me, he is. But that isn't what I fell for. I never fell for him in this whole new light because of the way he looked. It was him, who he was as a person, and that truly has never happened within any of my past relationships. This life continued for about 10 months. Football practice, basketball practice, sleepovers, birthday parties, all while sneaking in whatever we could in between. On my husband's work days, he would wipe his schedule clean 
turn off his phone and rent a hotel room for two days just to be able to be there with me from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We did this about once a week and it was always a countdown till the hour came. We would lay together and had what we called story time where we'd talk about our lives, childhood, current work situations, and everything underneath the sun. These days have become our favorite things and all things possible to do. We never wanted the hours to end, but they did, and we'd drive the 30 minutes home and snap back into mom and dad mode the minute we pulled into our driveways. Practice an hour later, Oh, hey, a pain in my buns. Why are you late again? or whatever it was to tease each other about that particular day. It was always something. He used to tease me so much in front of our spouses and friends that people may have wondered, and now when I look back, it all made sense. We had a couple of camping trips, a snow weekend and a lake weekend with three or four families included. He was by far more daring on these excursions than I was, any teensy moment to steal a kiss. He told me I drove him crazy risky. Goodness, I always think back and wonder how I could be such a terrible person. I continued my friendship with his wife as well. Even though I wasn't near as close to her as I was with him, we were still friends. She didn't have many, and it breaks my heart to this day. As time went on, we knew feelings were developing, and we talked about it. After the last weekend trip, he admitted to feeling jealous for the first time of Timothy. Watching him kiss, hug, or hold my hand made him almost nauseous. This was a huge turning point for him, where he knew our trouble was even worse trouble. We would get into long conversations about knowing we needed to end it that this just couldn't keep going on. We'd agree to stop, and it would last maybe a day or two, and we were back to messaging each other. Sometimes we'd message clear into the middle of the night when our spouses were fast asleep. I was on cloud nine with all of these things when I could disconnect from what an awful human I felt I was turning into. During the last week of our affair, he sent me a message saying, when you're in love with your best friend and have been in front of you all along. Several messages about how we had fallen in love with each other and what in the world are we going to do now? I was so scared of what ultimately was heading our way. Was I going to be the strongest I'd been and end this affair with the person now that I'm truly loving? Were we going to leave our spouses and be together? Or were we going to get caught and explode both of our lives? We knew how we felt, but knew that we could never build a relationship off of an affair. We agreed that we needed to deal with our marriages, figure out if we could or even wanted to anymore, work hard, and try to save them. That next day, Steve planned to take my kids and him to a friend's party prep to test out the giant man-made slip and slide. Steve himself was a huge kid at heart. My kids loved him. Timothy was upstairs sleeping for a bit since he had just gotten home that morning from his shift. Steve arrived and we were chatting at the front door about the plan of when they'd be home and so forth. I, for the most part, never leave my phone in any other place other than my pocket or purse wrapped around me, but when Steve came to the door, I had left it lying on the bed. Instagram wide open and I had no clue. Within minutes, I sensed Timothy was awake from his nap. My gut instinct hit me. He was laying over the side of the bed with my phone in his hands, reading whatever it was that was left up. When I realized and came to the bedroom, leaving Steve at the door, my stomach hit the bottom of the earth. He was reading all of the messages from the last one up to who knows how far. He just looked at me and said, What is all of this? Who is so-and-so? His Instagram name wasn't his real name. I was like a deer in the headlights, and he just knew. He started yelling and demanding answers. I just broke down crying and refused to give him the name of who it was. 
He kept asking and yelling. I started packing a bag knowing that I needed to leave. I was in the middle of a huge mess and my husband has just discovered the affair. What a nightmare that was flashing before my eyes. He finally guessed it. That's Steve, isn't it? Tell me the truth. I finally admitted that yes, that's who it was. Timothy went to the kids' rooms and explained that Mommy was leaving and they would not be going to the afternoon birthday party as planned. I quickly texted Steve saying, He knows. He responded with, Knows what? I said, Everything. Timothy immediately called Steve. He said, What in the actual fuck is going on? They yelled at each other for what seemed like an eternity, and I was throwing scattered bags of who knows what into my car. As I came back to try and have a conversation with my kids before leaving, he was dialing Jenny's number. Steve answered, yeah, I get it. You want to tell her. I'm telling her. Timothy screamed, insisting he better be or he was going to do it. I finally got out of there and sped off as quickly as I could, no clue where I was going. I couldn't contact Steve as he was dealing with his own living hell at his house. I went to a friend's house and literally crumbled on her driveway. My two best friends dropped everything and got there to help with whatever it was that they could. This was a complete shock to them as I hadn't told a soul, but there they were. They never judged and just held me for hours. They begged me to stay the night with either of them, but after so much exhaustion, I really needed to be alone. Steve sent me a text saying that he had left cash for me hidden at his work and I needed to go get it to cover a hotel room for as long as I needed. He was a mess. He said he couldn't talk. He was in a world of mess just the same. I finally settled into a hotel room and laid awake the entire night. My eyes could have not been more puffy and swollen. The morning came and I began texting Timothy asking about the kids and where we'd go from here. He wouldn't respond at all. A few hours later he called. I was so afraid to answer. He asked me to come home. What? How could this be that he wants me to come home? I was flabbergasted, shocked, and confused. No, we're getting a divorce. I have Monday morning figured out to meet with my dad's attorney and then head to speak with my boss about getting my job back full time. He pleaded with me to come home and talk. Trembling, I finally gave in and drove home. We talked calmly for the most part. It would escalate here and there. I could not believe that he was insinuating working it out. I had no idea that that was even what I wanted anymore. I had been so unhappy for so long. He was just a moody, unhappy person the majority of the time. He has also shown some really scary, strange behaviors over the years, and I was just completely resentful. That night, we spent some time with the kids and tried to be calm and reassuring to help them comprehend what they had seen and heard the day before. We finally tucked them into bed and our conversation continued clear until the middle of the night. In the bathroom sitting on the floor, he wanted explanations and wanted to know how all of this happened. I flooded the bathroom with truth and honesty that night. I cried loudly and told him what he'd done to me over the past few years. I didn't love him anymore. In fact, it felt like hate. It took hours, but I told him everything. I know it was almost unbearable to hear. I never had told these things to him before. Tears streamed down his cheeks and he said, I had no idea. He hugged me and wept. We both did. Turns out, Steve and I saw things in each other that our spouses didn't have. Things we craved and really wanted out of a relationship. His wife was not giving him anything. They had become roommates and had grown apart. He needed compassion, love, and affection for her to listen to him and show an interest in his life outside of her and the kids. He was starved for those things. And I needed a friendship with Timothy 
a kind person that could admit that maybe he needed some help in dealing with his struggles, instead of taking it out on the kids and I all of the time. I needed for him to step out of his comfort zone a little when it came to friendships with our people and take an interest in things I had going on outside of the home. Overall, I wanted to feel happy where I lived day in and day out and not wonder what kind of mood he'd be in each day. I walked on eggshells almost day in and day out. The stress from that was unhealthy and my body could feel it. Where are we today? It's been a year and two months since all of this came to light, and we are still together. Working the hardest I ever have on me, who I want to be, and what's really important. Timothy has owned up to his part in us getting to where we had gotten. Not justified, but I didn't get there on my own. He's worked extremely hard on bettering himself as a husband and a father, even with his friendships with others. He's become a more likable guy by all. My kids have even noticed and asked, What's wrong with Daddy? He seems so different. Our kids are good and over time have been able to understand that mommies and daddies go through tough times. It takes lots and lots of work to maintain a happy and healthy marriage. They've made me incredibly proud. I continue with my weekly counseling sessions and don't see them ending anytime soon. For the most part, we were able to keep things relatively quiet in town and neighborhood. People have obviously clued into our friendship with this family being no longer a thing. Some know what happened, but not all. I'll keep it that way as long as possible, and I'm very aware that things could always resurface and be a neighborhood discussion once again. Our kids no longer see each other, as that is just extremely hard to manage. Absolutely not fair to them. I will always regret letting what happened happen. But I learned from it, and we now have honesty, transparency, and are more of an open book together than ever before. My feelings have come back around for Timothy, because he's made such a huge change in himself. The kids are our number one priority, and we are taking things day by day, working through things as they come up. We are very hopeful we can survive all of this, but we also know that if anything changes and we just can't get there, we will be open and honest with one another and do what's best. As for Steve, I see him in passing or at sporting events here and there from afar. I've done my best to separate and choose different activities for the kids hoping to steer clear, especially to help our spouses. Steve and Jenny have stayed together. I hear little tidbits from others that it sounds like they are in the same exact boat, trying but no idea what the future holds for them. About a week after the explosion, we quietly met so that I could retrieve some items he had of mine, and we said our goodbyes the best way we knew how. It was gut-wrenching, to say the least. I lost my best friend. I loved him, and I still do, and I know he feels the exact same. I think of him every single day, quite possibly the greatest human I've ever experienced within my life. I pray that no matter what, he isn't being starved anymore of all the things he deserves. We only get one chance at this precious life, and it is flying by so very quickly. CJ, thank you so much for sending this story. The way you wrote it was great. You've explained in detail your feelings, your emotions. And as I read the story, I could actually feel them along with you. And the way you ended it is something that I truly believe for everybody in situations like this, that we only get one chance to live life and we need to make the best of it. And I know that so many people make decisions based on other people's lives and what they should do for other people involved. And I've talked about this, like the children, um, and they end up being so miserable. And it sounds to me like you are really trying hard. And I am so glad to hear that Timothy was receptive of the things that you 
had told him that you really needed these things and it had been lacking and that he was able to take accountability for mishaps in the marriage that caused you to feel lonely or almost, and you never use the word abuse, but when he was grouchy and he would take things out on you, I mean, after a while, it does feel like, hello, I'm not your, you know, your punching bag here, not physically, but um, emotionally and verbally, um, and that he's really coming around. I know from just working with people that a lot of times men will stay with their wives with infidelity. Um, not every time, but if there's a first time that it happens, they usually want to work through it. After that, if it happens again, then they're out of there. And again, that's not, that's, every story is different, but, um, sometimes these things happen and it brings people closer together because they are realizing uh, we take each other for granted, or I take this person for granted, or I had no idea, or I was just so used to the routine in life that I never saw how this was affecting my partner. And they can just have an opportunity to start over and build a better foundation for themselves and their family. So thank you so much for sharing this. And again, I really love the way you wrote it. I enjoyed reading your story. And again, I really feel how you feel or felt, because a lot of what you said was similar to how I felt. So even though I do this all the time, it's good to know, even myself, I'm not alone. And neither is anybody else who's going through this. Take care, and again, thank you so much. You have been listening to Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity. Your support of the podcast is truly appreciated. Be sure to visit my website at rawtruthstoriesoffemaleinfidelity.com to access story guides, subscribe to Patreon for bonus episode of the men's side of female infidelity, and to vote for this podcast to be in the Hot 50 Countdown for Podcast Magazine. To submit your story for the show, share feedback, or if you have a Let's Ponder suggestion, please email it to rebecca.rawtruth at gmail.com or send by snail mail to Rebecca Adams, P.O. Box 821064, Vancouver, Washington, 98682. Every story is always anonymous. If you listen on Apple Podcasts, please rate and review the show. Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity is produced and edited by Rebecca Adams. You can follow the show on Facebook at Raw Truth Stories of Female Infidelity, on Instagram at Podcast Raw Truth, and on Twitter at Raw Female. Thank you again, and be kind to one another. Be kind to yourself, and always remember, no judgment. Goodbye. Goodbye.